Thank you so much and again I'm a little bit sorry actually for coming in a little bit late uh, it's 17 minutes uh, gone after the hour of 10 but you know what I couldn't resist I was glued as well to the television here at home trying to find out uh, the results that uh, these anticipated results that we're waiting for uh, it, it has turned out that uh, really Emerson Munanga was swept uh, the whole of Zimbabwe uh, and he has won uh, the, this election and um, I mean they've declared nine provinces but uh, <laughs> there is no way uh, Nelson is going to catch uh, ED uh, you know just um, to give you a test I know all of you were listening to it and uh, you saw the numbers you know I was listening very attentively and I've got all the numbers here it's incredible so Harare province went to Nelson Chamisa but uh, Mashingo emphatically to Emerson Munangakwa Mashonaland emphatically to Emerson Munangakwa Matebeleland South went to Emerson Munangakwa would you believe uh, I'm sure they love him down there. Uh, Bulawayo, uh, Bulawayo, of course, went to Nelson Chamisa. Uh, Matebeleland North went to Nelson Chamisa. Mashola and Central uh, went to um, Emerson Munangagwa. And uh, would you believe Midlands uh, of all places? Exactly 11,000 volts. Where, 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 I don't know, uh, uh -huh. I don't know what happened to 11,000 votes there. It's incredible. They weren't recognized. They weren't recognized, which is uh -huh. quite, which is quite interesting uh, development. Actually, I was listening very attentively to that. So, and uh, Manikalent, uh, really, it was neck and neck there in, in Manikalent, uh, you know. So, uh, your winner, E.D., Munangaba. And someone was alluding to me that uh, uh, Jonathan Moyo tweeted, I don't know when he tweeted it, but he tweeted it uh, that uh, Emerson Nangakwa is going to be declared winner 53% and Nelson Chamisa with 45%. It looks that way. It looks exactly to the dot. Exactly to the dot. Unless my figures are not correct here. But it looks exactly to the dot. Your president... Emerson Munangakwa, I don't know when the um, when he will be sworn in, but I'm sure probably by the weekend he will be sworn in as your next president for the next five years. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe Sekul is boycotting here. I don't know. But uh, he is vindicated, isn't he? I just wanted to, 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 to give him his kudos today because he predicted the correct result. Um, Mukoma Wilbert, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, DJ. Hello, everybody. Hello, um, fellow Zimbabweans, wherever you are in the world. Um, my uh, sympathies. I think uh, many of us are disappointed. Uh, this is going to be a nightmare. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mkoma Wilbert, on that. Uh, Mkoma Benford, welcome to the show. Yeah, my dear, I'm going to go to DJ Soza. Did you go to Muria, Zimbabwe? Well, I think uh, for some of us, this is a, uh, you know, this is a very, you know, a good, it's a good day. Right. Uh, right. I think uh, we have been saying on this show that uh, the people of Zimbabwe are going to make their choice and uh, the people have spoken. Uh, I want to congratulate Nelson Chamisa for running a very good, uh, good race. Uh, I think you can see that... Um, for provinces like Manikaland, I think as you said correctly, it was neck, uh, neck to neck. Uh, in fact, Chamisa carried Manikaland by about 4,000 votes, uh, which shows you what kind of a race uh, we, we, know, we were talking about here. At the end of the day, uh, this is what it is. It is the pain of, uh, of, 
of democracy. One man, one vote can be painful. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean that the majority will make a decision that is, uh, you know, that you think will be good for the country. But uh, you have to go by the majority. Uh, in this case, I'm afraid that it is the the Mashonaland uh, provinces uh, that tilted this election in favor of Mnangagwa. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Koma uh, Rupert. Sally, welcome to the show. Sally, are you there? Yes, no, I'm here. I was just listening to what they were talking about on SABC. Uh, Ah no, that that's that that's that's now immaterial, Sally. The the, the the election is finished. The election is finished. We've got our president, and that's it. <laughs> Good evening, DJ Sosa. Good evening, Zimbabweans, wherever you may be. My sympathy and my condolences and my everything. Okay, um, you fought hard. Um, what else can you say? Yeah, in actual fact, Sally, I'm just receiving uh, information now that uh, Mashonaland and West, uh, which was outstanding there, Nelson Chamisa had, uh, sorry, uh, Emerson Mnangagwa has taken that with 313,000 votes, 648, uh, 313,648 uh, to Nelson Chamisa of 216 441 votes so no contest no 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 chance there yeah you know what i don't understand okay is the amount the thousands of votes not allowed i mean when you're talking about 10 11000 votes not allowed that to me is kind of eh? I've never ever heard that amount of votes not allowed in any country election. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know. Look, hey, it is what it is. We've got to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off and carry on. What, what else can you do except go to war? There's nothing else. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sally, for that. Uh, Teteros, welcome to the show then. Hello? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Hi, how are you? Yeah, welcome to the show. How are you? How's everybody? No, we are fine. Um, welcome to the show. Were you listening to the results? <laughs> no, I wasn't listening. Okay. Right. Um, thank you so much. Right, so, Mkoma Wilpet. Hello. Yes, Mkoma Wilpet, maybe let me uh, start to name it. I know, I mean, the election has been won, but I'm just a bit still very pained with what happened yesterday. And, uh, I mean, I mean, whoever was going to win this election, really it's immaterial but for people to lose their lives the way they did yesterday i find it very very sad and um you know I, I don't know what you thought about what happened yesterday and maybe i, I know that some people are saying this is not time to, to to air blame on people but really who is going to take responsibility for the loss of life in the streets of Harare yesterday. To be quite honest, uh, DJ, um, what we saw yesterday is only going to be the beginning, because I, 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 um, I can tell you now that the whole election process, the violence, they all confirmed one thing: that Zimbabwe is still a pariah state ruled by individuals who rig the elections. I mean, we, we hear some, those who support the uh, Zano PF saying these elections were free and fair. How can you have free and fair elections when you don't have a voter score? Mm. It's such a fundamental requirement. Yeah. And the frustration that people were expressing yesterday 
it's going to be felt again and again when we begin to think that the economy is not going to pick up. I was just listening to, B, to BBC uh, report there, and, 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 and the lady was correctly saying that uh, this had been the, a wonderful opportunity for Zimbabwe to turn the corner. If, they, if we turn the corner, the answer has got to be no. Any investor who uh, was sitting and watching what was happening in Zimbabwe during these elections and then the violence can honestly say to themselves, this is a country that has not turned the corner. Zimbabwe is still politically unstable. And Nelson Chamisa is still maintaining that uh, he, uh, uh, this evening he was interviewed saying he definitely has won the presidential. So there you are. If, 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 you, if, if you can't even add up figures, you know, one is saying one figure and the other one is saying another one, it, it clearly shows that this is a, a, a process where there is absolutely, it's disappointing. I honestly believe we are going to see a lot more of this uh, in the next five years. If we thought we turned the corner, you can forget it. We haven't turned the corner. If you saw, saw what happened, the violence, I think when, uh, uh, we will see a lot more of it when people get even more and more desperate. Because there's no way you can allow a nation to continue living with an unemployment rate of 90%. That is not fair. That is not fair. You know, some people are now into their 30s and they've never had a job and, and into their 40s. This is the time when they should be there at their most productive. And they are, they are not being given that chance. You, DJ, mark my words, this is the beginning of ways to come. Mm -hmm. uh, ways to come. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so who, 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 who was to blame for the loss of life yesterday? The loss of... You've got to blame it on, on the... On the um, for the failure to hold free, fair, and credible elections, the level of frustration that people felt uh, is, is is genuine. It is heartfelt, and I think the the opposition, uh, to some extent, are to blame for it because they kept saying that they would won the elections, and then they are the ones who are telling us Shamisa was admitting that all oh, those uh, parliamentary results were correct. The only one they were disputing is the presidential one. Why did they say so? Why did they say to the people, no, we, the parliamentary ones we had lost? They made people believe that the parliamentary ones were being rigged. You know, again, this is where I'm saying the, the opposition have got to take responsibility. And from some of the reports that we have heard, Chamisa is saying those people were not MDC, but some of the people who were in Harare were saying that those people were initially at uh, Morgan Changirai house. That's where they started. Are you trying to tell me which it was just all the members of the public who were there interacting with the rest of the MDC people and then they left and MDC people supporters stayed there? I don't think so. I think they were still members of MDC and the violence was only what Zanopiev was looking for. And they descended on the people like a sledgehammer. And we saw so many people being killed, so many people being injured, and it was now the excuse for literally imposing a curfew. And until the uh, inauguration, I can tell you, we'll have police and army presence all over the country. Mm -hmm. So, are you trying to say here that uh, there was shared responsibility? Well, I, I, I think I still maintain my position. These elections should never have taken place without the democratic reforms. Because we knew the Zanopia will rate them. Yes. And once people believe that they are going to have meaningful change, and then it, it doesn't happen, you can understand why people are frustrated. Right. The question then is, as the opposition, were you being responsible by promising things, people, uh, to uh, something to, to people which you know you knew all along that you would not never deliver. That is not fair. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. So, uh, are you vindicated, Mkoma Wilbert, by saying that really these elections, it, we should, this should never happen? The, the, the elections should have never happened. 
Mm. We are back to where we were yeah. five years ago. Mm. You know, and 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 uh, at this rate, we are not moving an inch. If we are not going to be going to be serious about having a, a, a change political system, we need to address these political issues. Political instability is fundamental. Stability, rather, is fundamental to economic recovery. Without political stability, we can kiss goodbye to economic recovery, and that is exactly what has happened here. Like I said, no foreign investor is going to bring in money in a country where the only uh, regime change that, that will ever happen is through a military-assisted transition, as we saw in, in last November. Nobody wants that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Komong, uh, for that. Uh, right. Mkoma Benford. Yes, DJ Soda. Yeah, Mkoma Benford. I know we want to come back to these results, but I just want to ask you a little bit about what we saw yesterday. Uh, who is to blame for that? Yeah, and I think what happened yesterday was very unfortunate. Uh, it is something that should never, um, you know, have happened uh, in the first place. Uh, if you look at it, I, I would put most of the blame on the opposition. Uh, when you go into an election uh, with one result, where you declare that the only result is uh, uh, your own victory, uh, then what are you saying? There's no purpose of even getting into the election if you are saying uh, we are only going to accept a victory. Uh, otherwise, there will be chaos in the country. Now, if you also look at what uh, happened yesterday, there was no need for that demonstration at all. Uh, according to the Constitution, Zeki had five days to verify and then announce the result. That is well stipulated with the Constitution. And we are on day two. So what was the fuss about? You know, that is like when, when it was not declaring the, you know, the results, they were delaying, they were, you know, falsifying things. It was within the constitution mandate, we were within five days. And today they've released, uh, you know, the presidential results. We are on day three. They still have two more days and it could be, you know, they could be within their constitution, right? So... And ahead of that, you also had the opposition, recklessly saying that I've won, uh, you know, making statements like that. That showed immaturity on MD's leadership. And uh, as a result, as far as I'm concerned, uh, they are accountable for the blood that was lost uh, and the lives that were lost yesterday. Mm -hmm. Now, so, yes, so, you said that. If, yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, no, I'm just, I'm just that. wondering. I'm just wondering, Mukoma. I mean, in in anger, really. I mean, my my work is to save life. You understand? That's what I live yes. for. I live for to save life. What I do is save life. I can't believe. Yes. I can't believe someone can order a soldier to go and spray uh, live ammunition on. Uh, Civilians. I mean, we have seen this this uh, this, this violence before. I don't know how much violent was it yesterday, but we have seen this before. Police goes there with uh, you know tear gas, and, and and within ten minutes, the whole I mean, the crowd is dispersed, and no one is killed. Why, why, why would you go with a machine gun? But it's fair enough if you are saying that you are blaming uh, the opposition for not uh, uh, containing their crowd and all that and all that. Fair fine, fair fine. You see, we, yeah. beg, we, we I beg to differ with you there. I mean, for me, yes, whoever but lifted the but gun to soldier. spray, yes. Did you just that? In as much as life is important, and like I said at the beginning, not a single life should ever be lost for a politician, okay? But we cannot also tolerate people who are destroying properties. They were burning cars, they burned my example of cars, they were destroying people's property. Yeah. Uh, you know, that is, you know, that, that oh, should okay. be allowed. Why were they destroying now, people's property? Well, Why were they burning cars? Mkoma Why were they attacking... Mkoma Bedford. 
Are you telling me that if someone can't stay at your house and burn your car, you kill that person? That's fair and square. Of course. It's fair and square. Of course. DJ Soza, in Mukaska Pamba Pangu, Mugasa, in Bangu, Fuo, Mugai Pisa. Yes. I have worked hard for my house, I will kill you. Okay. A car is equivalent to the life of a human being. What you are, you are, you are, you are missing here, DJ Soza, is more lives could have ended up being destroyed if they tolerated that nonsense. Uh, after my results are released, well, MDC was going to make a uh, you know, they, you know they, they, they promised before that they were going to make you know business stand still. There wasn't going to be any you know activity in Arare. Potentially, if they you know if they responded later, more lives would have been uh, lost. So right, okay, so I, I want to then, no, okay, Mukama Ben, I want to move on. So you are telling me that. Uh, Instead of using tear gas on these people to neutralize them and not kill them, it was well and truly in their power and they were right to go with machine guns and spray these uh, live bullets on civilians that were not even matching. The people that are coming up, the woman that was killed, and you justify that? That is not justifiable. Uh, usually, when we are not far under those circumstances, when we are innocent, we are to go about their business. We are to tease out, we are to go to Those who are in the forefront are our people, my things are going to But it's, un it's very unfortunate. My po the point that I'm saying is there was no reason for anyone to be demonstrating yesterday. Okay? If people had understood that, then all we're talking about here is that it's not waiting. That's fine. And That's the fine. Opposition should have restrained their, but, you know, restrained their, their, their. Yeah, their, but, their, but their, what I'm saying, but what I'm saying, I'm coming up in for participants. We're not under good. Fair enough, right? But one of our Kanganisa, how many times have we seen these things happening in Zimbabwe? And the police, they open tear gas, and everyone goes home. Now, why didn't that happen yesterday? Why would you open a live bullets on people? I'm not worried about what they were doing, but what I'm saying is they could have been neutralized in other ways, in other ways, not by shooting them. Uh, DJ Soza, my, my battles in Purisa went on for five hours. If the police, before the soldiers were called in, it went on for five hours. If the police cannot neutralize you for five hours, it can only get worse. Oh. Because the, 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 you know, the, the, the crowds would only get larger and larger. And in that case, it becomes chaotic. Okay. Right. So, That's fine. in as much as it is said that six lives were lost, but uh, I personally believe that uh, in losing six lives, uh, they probably saved a thousand lives. That could okay. have been lost. All right, that's fine. So it was good that these uh, soldiers were deployed and the people that were killed, it's unfortunate, but it had to be done. Thank you so much, Mukoma Ben, for that. I, I'm, I'm not saying, I, I never said it was good. It, it can never be good when somebody loses their life. Okay. But, but it, was it was justifiable. It was justifiable to... under the circumstances. Okay, all right. But very unfortunate. Okay, I will. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, <laughs> All right, I know. I can't expect much more. Can you I know. I I I I Thank you for joining us. Um, um, uh, congratulations, by the way, uh, for beating Chelsea yesterday, Seguru. That, that's, uh, that was a good result. Chegore, you know, you know, you know, Thank you so much, Sebu. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm, uh, the people of Zimbabwe have uh, endorsed Emerson Munanga for them? Yes, they have. 
the hell. Now, Mkoma teach, I, I, I I'll come back to that in a second. I, I'm just wondering about what happened yesterday. I know there's a lot of uh, stuff that was well justified. It, it actually saved a lot of life. Uh, but from my point of view, I, 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 I'm a professional and I work to save people. So I was touched by it. And I thought maybe the police or the soldiers could have used another method uh, and preserve life. What was your take on that? Was it justified? No, absolutely not. And the, uh, the, the issue is the, the demonstrators were provoked. Because I'll tell you what, we saw the police patrolling in, in, in doing their constitutional duty of keeping peace. We saw that. And then even the police would stop by uh, the harvest house where the kids were gathered playing music waiting for results. And kids would laugh with the police even jump on police cars. No issue. Mm. Nothing happened. The police were not even worried because the kids were just happy. They were mm. just enjoying themselves, listening to music. They didn't threaten anybody at the time. No property was damaged. No person had been beaten up. No person had been threatened. They were just at their head office, listening to the loud blare of the music, listening to the results as they were coming in. And that is what they were doing. ZANPF have got a caged area. Their own people, when they at a ZANPF head office, doing exactly the same. The only unfortunate thing is that the MDC head office is in the CBD. And uh, at the end of the day, they are more visible. So these kids were doing that and patrolling. The police passed it. They had so many times their videos to show. Yes. So many times the yes. kids would jump on and off, not an issue, and they would not follow. They just jump on, jump on and off when the police were uh, at their premises. They didn't follow the police to harass the police. The police didn't harass them. The police did not even react in any manner. They were laughing, just saying, just keep it calm, guys. There was no issue there. Whatever happened next is uh, the issues of the results started trickling in. There were doubts about what had been happening. There were issues about uh, all those ballot boxes that were being found, which still could be a contested issue. And the next thing, we saw the army come in to clear the city. There was no, there had not been any violence before that. There had not been any violence before that. Mm. The people that started uh, make, uh, attacking the kids were the people that trying to disperse them from their head office. To listen to their uh, results. That's it. So, so a, anyone wanting to say that is them that escalated that. And the soldiers had no reason to be firing live rounds when there was not even a, an armed robber. Mm. I, I, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense uh, that even if they wanted to just clear the business district for whatever reason, they needed to come in armed to the teeth like they're on an assault course. That was completely disproportionate, even by police standards, even by any other brutal standards anyway. You know, but the truth of the matter is, we say, is they're in charge. You know, they're in charge. They really, were well, they're not too sure at that particular time whether their, their man, um, Nanga Go, he, he was carrying the day. So the direction was totally over the board, not confident, not too sure. So at the end of the day, I'm sure there will be a lot of inquiries as to who deployed the soldiers on what basis. Mm. Those kids did anything wrong. They, they went singing to to uh, uh, HICC, where Zek is best, and they left. They didn't do any damage. And the most that they did was to burn the regalia that they had taken from ZANPF. That was the most that they did, which was a simple police issue. If it escalated, the police were monitoring it, would have handled it. That is the most they did. And, and right now, I just want to hear someone who can say, what was the justification of the military? I, I really don't get it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Sekuru. Hello. Yeah, Sekuru. Kuna uh, wangu uh, the... Uh, people were vandalizing things and they were threatening to kill people and what not what not so the, the the soldiers actually by shooting live ammunition they saved a lot of lives by doing that do you concur 
akana ogeni we save life by taking out life akuna zvakadare vanhu vakuzvi mbavo ma definitions zavo sometimes the mind probably you can't save life by killing other people you are in you are, you are in subtracting life so sekur who is to blame for this i know sekur you can't be partisan on this especially when people live to lose their life life is the most important thing i mean that we have you understand you cannot buy life right now for someone to take someone's life this is a major issue even say wouldn't go away if i bend your car there and you take my life you'll be arrested and prosecuted for it you know you cannot compare a bent car and a life of a human being but i'm just wondering say guru who is to blame for this because someone should be accountable for this eh chiribu judge judge ma soja must be taken to account those who fired Uh, live shots uh, and uh, killed uh, people whether they were guilty or not must be put on the dock and tried and uh, convicted and sentenced to hefty prison sentence because uh, a trained soldier i am one of them mm. a trained soldier does not fire at a civilian target a uh, was shoot a civilian in the back aiming at the back of a civilian it is it is unbelievable a soldier can only discharge a gun at another to avoid his imminent demise from a gun being pointed at him mm-hmm. so in this particular instance we got a situation where a soldier was faced with somebody with throwing a stone or throwing this this kind of arms the soldier is trained to overwhelm the uh, the, uh, the adversary mm. rather than rather than to shoot to kill was by using live bullets and i watched some of the few videos and this somebody was deliberately uh, editing them if we exactly at the moment of shooting uh it happened as i saw on the videos there were no warning shots fired in the air there was no uh, announcement that if people continued uh, behaving in the manner that they were doing mm. they were going to be shot mm. and killed mm. and it was like uh, you have entered the battlefield and you are exchanging fire with the people without any arms that i could not understand it at all now sakuru uh you said you could maybe you you did train as a, as a soldier as well tell me this now these people surely there should be someone higher who gave the order to open fire or do you think these soldiers took uh, took uh, law into their hands and fire live ammunition uh i think uh, the order to shoot was not from high above because on the clip one of the clips that i show where there was that made maniac soldier firing rapidly at mm. innocent civilians the commander actually came from running from behind and they hit him on the back to yes, say, i saw that i saw that so i don't think there was a direct order to to fire at uh, the civilians i think this was a, 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 a delinquent uh, soldier who needs to be put in the dock and explain who told him to fire right right wow so well, this is another dimension you are telling me uh, it's unbelievable that a, a, a soldier could could go there and open fire without uh, the, uh, the the direction of the commander Well, the commander clearly ran to him and hit him on the back and yes i saw that out. so it cannot be the same commander who had ordered him to to fire because why would he then go and hit him wow that is interesting seguru very very sad situation we saw and also shooting someone on the back this is someone who is running away so it's not a threat to the soldier is it not at all you see a soldier well as a trained soldier unless somebody pulls at you 
you are not required to discharge. Mm. It's only when a person makes gestures or near gestures to yeah. pulling and directing a firearm at you that you are supposed to shoot in self-defense to kill. Unless you are in a battlefield where you are there on the command that if you see anything, shoot it to kill. Yes. But this was not a battlefield. This was a containment exercise. Uh -huh. they, should have, they should not have fired a single shot directly at a certain level where they know it could hit either an innocent civilian or anything that has not provoked violence. What they should have fired was blanks in the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to, to, to just to disperse Kushishi Zirawa and disperse the, 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 to, yeah, to the people. To frighten these people not uh -huh. to fire live bullets into a crowd, that was outrageous, that. Right. So, Sekuru, let's get uh, facts right here. You are saying could maybe the soldiers were just deployed there to contain these people. And we have one or two soldiers there that just had uh, adrenaline rushing through their veins and they opened well, fire. Let me put it this way. These soldiers were on high alert. They were moving into a volatile situation according to the uh, uh, briefings that they've been given. Now, these are people who have been uh, taught to kill, but have not had anything to kill for quite some time. Mm. And he presented an, uh, 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 an uh, opportunity for them to practice their skills. Because if you look at that soldier that I'm talking about in particular, he started firing while he's on uh, standing, and then he went on the knee to, to actually fire at the level, at the uh, most lethal level possible. Mm. He, didn't go prone, he didn't go prone to show that he was afraid of return fire. He went for, for the most lethal level. Right. That that uh, when you faced with the civilian uh, running away is really pathetic. It's a colors. I tell you, I've never seen a, a well trained soldier or a trained soldier do that in my life. All right, Aiwa Sekuru, thank you so much for that. Um, Tete Rose, Tete Rose, are you yes. there? Yes, Tete Rose. Yes, you saw what happened yesterday. Your thought on that? Not yesterday. Yesterday I couldn't even work. Yesterday I couldn't even work. Right. I was so I was so traumatized yesterday. I just couldn't even. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I I never. You know, I've always known Zanipiev was evil, but I didn't realize they were this evil. I never thought I would see the day where they would be shooting live rounds and killing their own people. Yeah, but uh, daylight. Uh, daylight. Sekuru is explaining something to me here that I've never thought actually, that maybe the soldiers for sure were deployed to just go and contain. And as a trained soldier, you don't go no. and open fire. You know what I, what I actually heard from some of the reporters is, and Anzi, they were actually given an order. Anzi, Oh, right, okay. And okay. the order was actually given. Can I just correct that? Yeah. There is no army commander who gives a blanket order to go in the uh, Dambura mm. the, for teaching purposes. Yeah. The, the, the army orders are specific fire or cease fire. That is the only order that he tells a soldier what to do and what not to do. Mm. They can't be uh, given a, an advance uh, uh, order because that order is not possible to give because you don't know what you are facing. You can only... The, the ground commander, the field commander is the one who gives the order to open fire, to cease fire, to advance to retreat, to flank, and whatever. But it's those are orders that are given on the field. The 
idea that you have been given orders in the, in the field to contain and to do and to take whatever action is necessary to ensure that the revolt or the rebellion is suppressed does not give you a license to go and open fire. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Nina, I actually, I mean, I actually heard what they even um, one of the ministers was actually saying they need to kill a few of them. So I mean, I really don't. I, I mean, I don't really. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't really know or care. You know, and I don't really think. I don't. Think uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Rosie. What? what? Yes. Van Marco Fura and I have put it on the fourth street as we speak. Yeah, Van Marco Fura right now. Look at the report. Again. Wow. Look at the report right now. And my reporters are looking at Things are happening in Zimbabwe. The violence is continuing. This is wow. happening right now. Uh -huh. um, okay. Uh, Sorry. Can I just can I just can I just continue because I didn't actually finish what I was saying? Okay, okay, finish up. Okay, because I, um, and when you look at when you look at the people who were actually killed, a lot of those people who were killed were not even people who were involved in the protest. You know, and then you saw today the video of the family member. You know, where, where you see Zanukiev is covering up and lying again. They actually, the family, they actually lied on, tried to lie on the death certificates and paperwork. Yekuti, what was the cause of death? Like she's stabbing. Kuti, the cause of death was stabbing. And then they had some, they were saying some Cuban doctor signed off on the cause of death. But the Cuban doctor was called Dr. Tsuro or something. Some weird stuff and the families refused. To collect the paperwork, they said, no, we're not collecting our bodies. Though our, our family members were not even involved in politics. They were shot, they were killed, they were gunned down. So it's just a proper cause of death. Otherwise, we're coming here. So they were trying to cover up their tracks again, like they've done with everything else in their lives, where they've massacred people. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Sally? Yes, DJ Sota. Yes, yeah, Sally, uh, your thoughts on the death of people yesterday and who was to blame for that? Who was to blame? Zanu PF, Emerson, Munangagwa. Straight. Finish. Okay. This is <laughs> Munangagwa to the T. To the T. Okay. Yes, I can believe that he that that the that some of those soldiers were spoken to and told, kill people. You've got we've got to get back control. They've got to learn who's in power. I can believe that straight out, one thousand percent. Because for a start, when you get the first pictures of that demo, okay, and they are by that gate. The people are outnumbered, the demonstrators, and they're there going, Chamisa, Chamisa, Chisa, and all that, see for Chamisa, and all that kind of business, okay? The minute the cops started coming, you could see the people were outnumbered by the police. Finished, okay? They brought in those water cannons, which were donated to uh, by Israel to ZANU-PF, um, I think it was 2008. Or, yeah, I think it was the 2008, okay? And the minute they started using the water cannons, the people started to dispersing immediately. And then you saw there was like foam inside that water from the water cannons. And I think that's why the people dispersed so quickly, okay? And why they called in the army, I still... For me, it was just a complete and utter Emerson Bunangagwa way of saying, hey, I'm in power, and I'm not afraid of killing people. Finished. To show who's in power. And you know what destroyed me more than anything today? Was that Chamisa standing up and saying, ah, no, they're not uh, MDC demonstrators. So, the people are there shouting, 
Chamisa, Chamisa, Chisa, all this kind of business, demonstrating to 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 um, get him in as president, okay? Because they believe in the man, all right? And he turns his back on them. Ah, no, sorry, that's Judas to the T, to the T. That is Judas. Those people. Yeah. Oh dear Lord, I don't know. Okay, uh -huh. look, you can, you can believe in Munangagwa all you want, Be, but there is him to the T. Mugabe, at least, used tear gas and stuff like that, and he wasn't uh, quite as bad, I don't think. Okay, the army. That's the army that the people were running up to and kissing and hugging and passing their children up to and the prostitutes were giving free sex to. Okay? And that's the army. It's not an army anymore. The minute they had the coup, they stopped the army. It is now ZANU-PF private force. Finish. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Sally. And uh, anybody there? Yes, Mark. Yes. Yes, Mark. Uh, you saw what happened yesterday. What came to your thoughts? Well, I uh, um, uh, Sekurum Sikavani spoke for me. Uh, I feel exactly the same. I'm a military person. Okay. And uh, there's no. I, I don't even, you know, in civilian situation, even the troop commander who moves with the troops right to the scene, he has no right to, uh, to, to order the people to shoot. So what normally happens is carrying uh, a two-way radio that he talks to his commander at the control center and say, this is the situation and... Uh, um, People are kneeling down and ready to shoot. Are you? Can you give us the? Uh, uh, can you give us? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Can you give us uh, permission to shoot? Yes or no? So, uh, it, it, it it's either we have a very uh, um, we we have a very uh, undisciplined military. Oh, my thinking also is that the, 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 I, I, I would encourage you, maybe I'll send you a phone number, because mm -hmm. there's this young lady from New York, she was there and she, she captured some of the scenes there. Uh, uh, she says that even the police, after, after the main riot, right, where they put water on the people, after that, the police came in trucks and uh, they were actually fraternizing with the, the young guys there. They, they, but the guys, some of them were drinking a lot. And it was like fun thing with them until somebody burned something. They saw there was a fire here and there. That's when the commotion got caught and called the, uh, and called, uh, and the, uh, the army was called. But, and, and again, the military... I, I hear people saying, oh, they should have fired like uh, 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 rubber bullets or, or uh, 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 something else. Military always carries live ammunition and should never have been called to a situation like that. Unless if someone there had verified that it's a, 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 it's a, 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 a military tri uh, attack. So they... they I think the blame, uh, uh, the blame is going to go all around, but we need an independent investigation. But then you say, what is an investigation after we have lost lives needlessly? So, uh, like, like uh, uh, Rojo or uh, everyone else, I, I woke up very energetically yesterday, excited about the, the results and... Uh, um, uh, I went to my uh, dialysis treatment, very happy. Then when I came out of the dialysis, I look on my uh, uh, my uh, phone and I see this chaos. I could not believe it. 
I just could not believe it. So um, I, you know, I'm I'm totally powerless because I can't I can't understand why that had to happen. Mm -hmm. It is not right. Now, Mark, you said you've got some military background as well yourself. You concern as a guru that it would have been uh, an order from the hierarchy. They say nobody would order that. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention that uh, in one of the videos, uh, there is actually a commanding officer who, who throws his arms up and stands between one of the shooters and the people, and he's raising his hands and saying, stop, stop, stop. Mm. So, so uh, you know, it's... It, it, it's really confusing what what happens in there. When you see the the clips and the things that 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 uh, that I saw, you see that there was really a lot of confusion, and it's scary because uh, you you do want soldiers to be around as uh, 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 crowd control sometimes, especially when you're in a situation that you don't know who can come there or what can happen. But then you think if the little thing goes, hey, somebody says, maybe somebody saw the fire and was shouting, fire, fire, and some, one of the young kids got scared and started shooting. So if, if we are that chaotic, we don't need a military. We don't, why do we need an army in Zimbabwe anyway? Who are we going to fight? Mm -hmm. But, no, so I'm I'm very upset. Yeah, very upset about it. Okay, uh, thank you so much for that. What I'm going to do now is uh, probably just uh, go on to tour. Then that's okay, Momo. We want to just uh, ask everyone what you think of the results that have just been announced here, and uh, we see what we can do from there. Uh, Zimbabwe, if you are just joining us, it's Zoomnet Radio here, nine minutes after the hour of 11, and we are live from the U. <laughs> This is a disclaimer. The opinions expressed by contributors during radio calling shows are solely those of the individual callers and do not reflect the opinions of Zimnet Radio, DJs, presenters. This is a disclaimer. The opinions expressed by contributors during radio calling shows are solely those of the individual callers and do not reflect the opinions of Zimnet Radio, DJs, presenters, managers or administration. Listeners are encouraged and advised to seek the services of qualified professionals for their personal problems. In touch with the best online station, Zimnet Radio. Make the whole world know about your business. Advertise with Zimnet Radio. Email marketing at zimnetradio.com. This is a Thursday, and you know what that means. It's a men's coin show with yours truly, DJ Sods. <laughs> Uh, just hold on a second. Right, uh, thank you so much, Zimbabwe. Um, this is the second. Um, oh, it's just bad. Uh, can you just hold on a second, please? And uh, what's happening is, Pana uh, wanted to me a message, Pana, about Kwanzi uh, Ko. Uh, right. Uh, Job Sikala, does anyone know where he is at the moment, guys? And he's been killed. Yes, I, I didn't. 
He's no, Anzi, no, when they say Danzi is not dead, he's just missing. Well, I'm telling you uh, this evening. Yes, I'm getting. Yeah. Police are dead. Yes, I'm really? getting. I'm getting that message uh, from uh, about six of the listeners here because I've got a, a, a WhatsApp group and uh, everyone is saying. One message which has been duplicated, but that's not So is it true or is it not true? I heard that it's true. We don't when wait they, I, saw when, I saw when they're saying that he's not dead. We, we don't wake Nema, Nema rumors. That is our problem in Zimbabwe. No, 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 no. We are sharing information subject to confirmation. No, yeah. I think it's definitely. Has BT handed himself in? No, BT, hands, BT handed himself in. P, no, he, he actually didn't second. hand himself in. They, he, BT hands, he, called, he called the police. And they said that they didn't need him, but then he said that Anunzani, the police, whatever that woman Charamba had called him by name, because he was wanted by the police. But yeah. Anunzi, up at the press conference, he was actually attacked. And then the other kid, Anunzi, happy more Chishiza, has actually left the country because he was attacked. There were people we actually we were working, we actually called the U.S. embassy, letting them know what was going on. And then there's a guy in Chegu to Akawina when it was reversed. Who was actually running away from Chegu too because he was being hunted and four of his people had been taken because he managed to get the result reversed and the embassy was also trying to help him. These are things happening right now. Right. Okay. Uh, right. Oh, but I'm not going to. Um. Uh, the tank is a good pick up. All right. Again, tank is a good pick up. Uh, it's a good pick up. Your reaction to the uh, election of um, Mnangagwa has been endorsed by the Zimbabwe people. Nothing new, nothing surprising. I, I told you about it way back in February when I came from Zimbabwe and nobody listened to me. I told you that this is the way that to be the outcome. Mm-hmm. So nothing new for you, Seguru. You are not surprised. You knew this yeah. before any vote was cast. Not at all. In fact, I am even surprised that Mnangagwa uh, is running naked in naked Jamisa over this. It was supposed to be a complete whitewash. Right. But he had a whitewash in the, in the, in the, um, uh, in the house. They've got, what, 80%? Uh, yeah, but that was not even a whitewash because they got all the evidence, uh, they were allocated all the evidence seats. It was not a whitewash. The idea was to give nothing to MDCT. Absolutely anything called MDC should not have had anything. So that Chamisa is a, a project would then be forced into accepting the, 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 the Premier's position, which he had been offered anyway. And it initially indicated that he would take Mm-hmm. And uh, you would work towards uh, uh, rebranding MDCT into another entity which does not have an appeal to the people of Zimbabwe as the MDCT was and is. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Sekuru. So, Sekuru, uh, again, I have to ask you this question. That uh, So, really, my, my, my concern, Sekuru, is uh, so. Is this the will of the people, or there was something happened there in the background? When I say this is a predetermined election, oh, okay, it can't be the will of the people. It yeah, it's a predetermined election because it's the will of the junta, and the people bought into it by flocking with the Jamisa not knowing that it was a project of the Junda's will. Okay. So, Sekuru, I'm trying to understand. Uh, so, Chamisa Akatawwa Naena Anamnangago could go and do this, but we have got the results already. So, all what we are seeing is play acting. Aga would go and do this, and we will make you a prime minister. Because we will get a two-thirds majority in Parliament, we will change the uh, constitution provision and create a procedure for Prime Minister for you. 
So, a head on heart Sekuru, you are telling me that in the next weeks and months to come, Chamisa is going to come to become the Prime Minister of Zimbabwe. No, that was until when he realized that following Gudam Saira, then he started to become uh, growing uh, feathers. And then he went to Mugabe for sponsorship, and got sponsorship. I don't know, I don't know, I don't stage here, make shift to Baba. I a new stage here, I don't know, I don't know. Where did that come from? Right. Okay, so Sekuru, uh, this, is, this is very, very interesting news. So at the start, Chamisa he had been promised uh, the election is just a formality. We've got the results here and we will make you the Prime Minister. He knew it. He knew it and he knows it. In fact, he is even, uh, he is even surprised by the numbers that they voted for him. In, at no time did he ever think he would get such a, a, a volume of support from the electorate. He thought he would, uh, he would obliterate the name MDCT. He, he was sure he would do that. Uh -huh. All right. Now, so what changed then? He found a lot of uh, support and then Mugabe took him under the wings and gave him some money, uh, support him on this campaign and then he distanced himself from E.D. and Chiwenga. And uh, that is where he made a miscalculation because that then created a real big problem and challenge for Chiwenga and uh, uh, ED, which they could not stomach. That's why, that's why they swiftly moved to to show their displeasure. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, Tendai Biti is in it as well. No, Tendai Biti is has got his own project with the Welshman Nui that they had hated to get back at the, at the MDC for having. Uh, delayed their leadership of the party. So they were using uh, Chamisa as a, a, a means of uh, becoming uh, uh, closer to the electorate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Guru, it, it, as always, it's very, very interesting to hear uh, from... So, so what now for Chamisa? He's not going to get the Prime Minister job, so he is going to oblivious now. No, you can still get it if he plays, if he takes this back to the correct tune. At the present moment, he has been dancing to the wrong tune. He has been in the wrong basket to, to borrow from the dictator himself. Mm. He, has, he had gone into the wrong, he had jumped into the wrong basket and uh, he is getting it just, he just deserves that basket. Uh -huh. All right. So... I mean, this means it's a one-party state uh, in Zimbabwe, a military rule, and that's the end of it. I, to be honest, I, I, have told you, I have told you, I have told you time after time that yeah. this is the position, and the people just don't believe it. It is the reality. Mm, 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 mm. All right, Seguru, thank you so much. I mean, I'm going to teach you more to me Right, one right. Uh, go was always poised to win between 51 and 53 percent. Uh, if you saw my barometer, which I did uh, a week or so ago, uh, you could see that uh, that was my prediction. Mm. We haven't had the percentages yet, that I'm to do my machine and but uh, I had said the Chamisa will get between 45 to 49 percent. So, uh, in minimal results, I had to be honest. I, I can't really dispute them per se. Nekuti ukatasa the distribution. Eh, ilikuwa kitu chamisa. Acha iro chaje 
open dream, but normally the Zanu PFK, uh, he did well in machinery in this, but he should have done better and gone to 50 50. Uh, I was a bit surprised with Manika Lent, which was 50 50, where I expected Chagisa uh, would at least get 75%. So, Panagona Marzotti Manika Lent, Nemas Pellet East, Datum Panagoti, Kumuqueso, it will be Manga, it will be getting. Uh, my pittance is like in urban areas and sweeping the rural areas. So, for me, the background was really going to be Manuka Land and Machina Land East. Uh, Machina Land Central would have been a Boram Sango, just as Machina Land West would have been a Boram Sango benefit for Chamisa. And as it is right now, uh, at the closing of uh, elections, Machina Land Central Land Agency, 105,000 people voted according to you. ZBC. So, when I have to my elections, we are not going to challenge. Now, with the certain numbers, it's a case of Kura from evening uh, of the end of the parliamentary elections, uh, especially in the national and east, national and uh, uh, central areas. Yeah. So, there is very likely, there is a very serious likelihood that uh, MDC are going to eagerly challenge this. Uh, I'm just hoping they don't go into the street until they've exhausted uh, or proven their case. You know, all they need to do at the moment is to prove their case, to say uh, from their V levels, this is what they've got. And then also, from a logistical point, the votes could you have more than tripled overnight, went by five o'clock, two hours to the closing of votes in the rural areas with no light and people wanting to take me home uh, during daylight. Uh, you know, logically, you don't expect a bigger turnout at night in rural areas. You'd expect in cities people are coming from work, and then obviously uh, there could be a significant increase in the later voters, but nothing to double what would have happened from morning to end of daylight. So in rural areas, that sounds very impossible, that there's still people going to vote uh, after 5 o'clock at night. Uh, when we know rural voters normally will come and camp at night, they will be there by 6 o'clock when they give up. So if the numbers were not that high, you know, MDC has a right to logically challenge the logic of it until it's explained and the figures justify. But I would urge them to go through uh, the court process. Uh, if they've got that evidence, and then they can use that evidence. We have seen ballot boxes in vehicles that have been intercepted by the MDC. So I'm expecting really there's going to be uh, challenges. Hey guys, I'm going back to Vec to listen to the Machonal and West results. Okay, all right, that's fine now. Mo Mo Zuzu, I'll, I'll, I'll be yeah, the Machonal and West is like a good I'm going to be watching both. Uh, we can. We can uh, we can carry on with the show. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. that's fine. Oh, uh, that, that's not going to change the result no, anyway. No, no, hold on. It's not saying that it's coming with the MDC chairman and their MDC lawyer, Mlino. So they've got an announcement. Hold on. Right, okay. Uh, like I think we'll play a music picture and I think we what Jacamira said. We'll be back after this. Like I go to what MDC is uh, got to say. <laughs> Badara, <laughs> <laughs> 
guys, it, it looks like um, 50.8%. They did their maths all right, isn't it? They must have gone to school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think they, they had to make it very close because it would have been too obvious. Wow, 50.8%. That's very nice indeed. So, if no one had got 50% here, there was going to be a runoff, is it? But that was never going to be the case because they they did the math. Sekuru. What is it? with the presidential election? Can the other candidates pull their their votes together and get behind Chamisa? They can't. Okay. Well, but even if they do, Sally, they will not get to to to, to fifty percent. No, yeah, no, but it's just I wanted to know. Okay. If that could be done. That's all. All right. Because okay. I wasn't sure. Uh, all right. Um. Okay. So we've heard from Sekuru. We've heard from uh. Who have we heard? Hey, Mkoma Benford. He's rejoicing somewhere. Mkoma Benford, are you there? Hey, come on, move it. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, another five years. What happens in 2023? Oh, <clears throat> I'd like to reiterate what I said before. Mm. Uh, whether whether we, we, we can fudge this and think we are, we are making progress, the truth of the matter is the world can see with their own eyes that uh, this was just a, another fudged election. And, uh, and, and, and and we are not fooling anybody. Uh, like I said, uh, a, a lot of international observers are just shaking their heads. You know, if, if you seriously you have turned the corner, you have got uh, something else coming. You haven't turned the corner. And so the economy is still going to recover. And the, the politics is going to get worse. Because when people realize they, their life is going to change, Ah, okay. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just cut you off there. There's noise coming from there. From me? Yes. Yeah, it looks like it's gone now. Go ahead, Mkoma, a little bit. Mnagagwa is going to stand up and, and crawl and talk of uh, the, uh, the, the people have spoken. The, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Nobody's going to be fooled by that. You know, Zano PF people, supporters may, may cheer and applaud and think, yeah, that's, that's it. The truth of the matter is the rest of the world is not going to be fooled by that. We are back to where we, we started again. We still have got a pariah state that is corrupt, incompetent, and that stays in power by rigging elections. That is the bottom line. Some people were talking of uh, maybe Chamisa will be offered a prime, a, a, a prime minister position and so forth, a coalition. They can form a coalition, but even if they form a coalition, as long as it's not going to implement the reforms to make sure the next elections are free, fair and credible, we will still be where we are. You know, so the, the, whether there's a coalition or not, it's, it's neither here or there. If it's not going to change, move us from where we are, we are stuck. That is what is the, the, the biggest message here. Mm -hmm. Right. Just say, this is Nick Tamuri in Zimbabwe. Shandavi Tapana Vaka again today, so it's uh, seven minutes before 12. Really, Chef Medina Vana Vaka I think we've got to end the show, but uh, I've got a message here from um, uh, one of. Uh, from my colleagues here at Simulate Radio, that uh, they are going to um, to have an open mic, a night program uh, tonight. Well, it's 9:30. Um, uh, Times are going to America, but um, uh, GMT for those that goes with GMT. It's uh, 3.30 a.m. Uh, GMT. So I think he, they will be live on Facebook and on radio as well. And people can call in 
and also participate. Um, Koma Kemis, you want to say something because I, I just want to make an announcement here to people. Koma uh, Nandizo, Koma Suze, Magadi, 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 on behalf of the nation who have been listening uh, attentively, not just today, but for many, many weeks that you guys have been giving us education, entertainment, and information, which is um, kind of thought provoking. I want to really thank you guys. I want to thank you all for the Kuru, whose effect has continued to grow from me, has continued to grow because he ha objective. And don't want to to but I just wanted to offer a vote of thanks. And most of all, Mkoma Sodza, you have been engineering and holding the fort as the pilot. And we, you've been in the cockpit. I just wanted to say thank you so much for all that that you do relentlessly, week in, week out. Those are the Thank you so much, Mkoma Kemis, for that. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Mkoma Kemis. You know, um, really, guys, I have been on Zimnet Radio. I know that you guys, a lot of you guys listening now, you were not here when we started this show. Um, I, I joined Zimnet Radio, uh, when was it? 2008. You know, uh, I joined Zimnet Radio. And uh, I, I had no, no background at all of radio and all that. But I got trained in Iwano and Panapa. Very, very professional guys. And uh, they took me through thick and thin to try and teach me how to do my computers and all the rest of it. Kuti radio is And, uh, you know, I've, it's 10 years since I've been here. I hosted uh, not so, uh, uh, no, not it's not so, uh, what am I talking? I hosted Zandakusaru Zirai in Ketere Zona. That was my first show. Uh, and I air on Saturdays. And I moved on to Chakaku Zimbamatenga, which was a, a really good show. Uh, and I did it on Saturdays. And then I moved on to uh, Chikristo Netsika, uh, which was airing every Sundays. And then I was persuaded by um, some of my colleagues to join uh, the Men's Corner show. At that point, we were talking just, uh, you know, issues that affect men in life, basically. But uh, it, it all turned out when... Uh, there's a lot of noise from Koma Benford. It's incredible. Koma Teach Nana Sekuru. Then came into prominent um, and um, you know said Kutingati Tei is a politics a lot. But anyway, there's a lot of noise coming in. But what I'm telling you is next week is my last show. Next week is my last show. That's it. Next week is my last show. I don't know whether I'm gonna come back or not at the moment. You know, I might back, I might not come back at all. But what I want to say is thank you so much, Zimbabwe, for all what you've given me uh, for the past 10 years. I know some of you catch us in the, um, on the road, basically, because I know a lot of people uh, listening now were not listening back then. But Tahaba Kurene Radio, 10 years on the dot. And um, I've made friends here on the radio. I've made a lot of friends. Some of them, they never call in. But uh, they become friends wherever I go, and all that I've got, you know, your mobile numbers and everything. We speak on a personal level, Kunzoko, and all the rest of it. I will keep in touch, but remember, we are back next Thursday, and that will be my last show. So, thank you so much, Simba. Right. May I say something, please? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Um, oh. <laughs> I want to thank you for 
allowing me to take over men's show with you. And then for bringing Titchin when I asked you to. And with Sekuru, we've had one hell of a show. We've been through everything together and you've been there helping us and guiding us and putting up with all our performances and my losing it and I want to thank you. No, oh, Sally, that's fine. Absolutely fine. You know, I've become a friend for good as I live and die. <laughs> I hope that I'm not going to lose sight of you because I can't. You've become such a part of who I am. And I thank Titch for joining us and Sakuru. It's been a fantastic 10 years or whatever it was that we were together. I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Right. Okay. Sally, thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much. Do come back next week where we'll be doing uh, basically a celebrating show. Uh, to close off. Now, I don't know, uh, I, I've told Zimnet Radio uh, boss is here, but I've not had anyone who is going to take over the show. So, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe there might not be any men's corner ever, or maybe someone will come and take over the show. That, I haven't got that information at all. So, next week, it's our kind of uh, celebrating show, uh, a goodbyes, and that is that, right? We'll see you next week. <coughs> right. Goodbye, as we want to do something the next little bit. So, what a guy did 20 kinds of <laughs> Sorry that I couldn't keep it together. <laughs> uh, take, take care, guys. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much today. Sorry, Pantish. He's dumping us. He's dumping us <laughs> very ceremoniously. Uh, first, first we get Munangagwa as president, but then we get Sosa saying, Futsak when I, we've had enough of you now, too. <laughs> uh, Mukoma GV3, Muripo, yeah. Dave is... Dribo and Dave. Yes, Trova, I would say. GV3. I want to say thank you, Soza, for linking me with my sister, Sally Sekuru. You? I want to say thank you. 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 I want to don't you think so? We don't go to our own thing. Miramira Magaita, what is a winner? But what is a Magazi? Sound is that you talk about the Jungle as a city to be comes Babu. Sefur, I really wish you were wrong. Name is good. You don't get a room when you go back to the Giga and get Kupai Masa and I think I did it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Ah, hey! You guys are so good, 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 you gu